Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Anyway, uh, uh, good, good to be here and, uh, and happy to be chatting about something very important today, which is that structure has integrity. And, uh, and this, is a, this is a big topic and it's very important and, and dear to my heart is that many of us don't know how we end up in certain places or how we manifest things. But I promise you by the end of today and, and with this session, uh, you'll, you'll understand how uh, manifestation and creation takes place and also how you, you may have ended up in, in other places as well that you, you didn't want to or manifestations that, uh, that you don't want to. See, the key to understand is that uh, if, if you truly look at all success and all uh, failure, uh, there is a there is a magnetic force that that pulls things together. However, it is also a series of actions that the human being does to create certain things. And, and when you when you understand what causes those actions, uh, then then you're able to to really distinguish between what is success and what is not. So let's uh, let's just work on a few of these uh, I guess words that 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 I'm going to use that you may not have um, used uh, in this way before. So, so structure, what is a structure? A structure is anything with two or more points working together. Two or more points working together. That's a structure, okay? So my body is a structure. There's two or more, there's more than two points of uh, information on this body, that's a structure. Um, a, a skyscraper, a building, that's a structure. Two or more points working together. Uh, a, a bowling ball is a structure. Now, let, let's expand this a bit further. A, a soccer game, a game of football or soccer, that's a structure as well. That's a structure as well because there's everyone's working inside of a structure called soccer. That's a structure. There's, there's, there's things going on. There's tension. There's all sorts. A song has a structure to it. And there's a certain structure. In fact, right now, right now, we're we're actually in a structure together. It, we're, we're two or more points working together uh, in a. I am teaching. You guys are learning. So that's structure. Now, structure is held together by tension. Okay, tension, which is best uh, seen by by a rubber band. That is tension. So my body is all held together by tension. There is a, there's tension. Uh, on the bones with, with ligaments and tendons and everything else that allows this body to be upright. Does that make sense? So there's tension. Now, there's also tension in a, in a soccer game, isn't there? Even though there's structure, there's a tension and there's a goal and there's, there's tension between the, the players on the same team and between their coach and between the other team and between the referee and between the fans of both of both sides. Do you see that? There's, there's tension structures there that all want to be resolved. Now, same in this between, between you and I, uh, there's a tension structure here as well. I want to, uh, to give information. You want to receive information, you see? So tension always seeks resolution. It seeks to resolve itself along the path of least resistance. So tension wants to resolve itself, wants to resolve itself. So whenever you, if you, if you increase the tension on something, there is a, an obvious way the tension of this rubber band, okay? There is an obvious way that this tension wants to resolve, isn't it? It wants to resolve by coming into the middle. You see that? That's an obvious resolution. So you must remember this. All tension has an obvious resolution. It's, very, it's a very important thing about what we're going to talk about. So structure, two or more points. Tension, the force between those two points. You know, uh, if you have uh, water and then you have a dam, there's tension that you might call pressure. Okay, pressure is another word for tension. It's the force between two points. Okay, avoid 
where there is nothing, okay, is also uh, also has a tension. See, anything where there's disequilibrium will create movement. Structures, can everyone make sure you write this down? Structures create movement. So here's a structure, it's called my two hands. I increase the tension. Now, if I release the tension in one or the other, there's movement, you see that? But this hand doesn't move out here because the structure and the tension says that if I release it, it's gonna move this way. Does this make sense? So structure creates movement. Is everyone with me right now? Everyone here? Structure creates movement. So there are different types of structures. There are different types of structures, okay? There's a, there's a stuck structure or a non-moving structure, okay? And not like a skyscraper is non-moving. There's no movement in that structure. You can put as much energy onto it as you want. Well, there is, there's a, you can demolish it, but, but, but it's not moving. It's either gonna be stuck or you're going to break that structure. Does that make sense? Whereas a, uh, a bowling ball, you put energy onto that, it moves. But it moves different to a beach ball. When you put energy onto that, it moves in a different way. I promise you get a, a very different uh, <laughs> change to the structure called your foot if you kick a bowling ball or you kick a beach ball. True? <laughs> One of those structures will not survive that. And so, uh, <laughs> so, so it's important to know that a structure has integrity. Integrity meaning being whole, okay? A structure has integrity. There is a way that the movement will happen in that structure. Structure has integrity. Inside, their structure, inside that structure, there is only one way for movement to happen. Does this make sense? There is only one way for the movement to happen. If, if you kick, if you put the same energy into a beach ball and a bowling ball, the two structures will act differently. Not because of the difference with your kick. Does that make sense? Not because of the difference of your kick, it's because of the structure. That's the same if you if you try to push, uh, you know, a skyscraper, it's, it's not, it's not going to move. You push something else, it moves. So the types of structures there are, stuck structure, which is when it doesn't move, okay? The structure, the tension in that skyscraper is in such a way that it's not going to move. Then there's an advancing structure. An advancing structure is like a skateboard, a car, or, or a beach ball. When you put energy onto it, it moves, okay? It moves. That's an advancing structure. Does that make sense? So stuck structure, advancing structure. Another type of structure is a weird one. It's called a oscillating structure. An oscillating structure is like a swing or a pendulum. Or when you put energy into it, it moves, but because it has a fulcrum, it moves back. Does that make sense? It moves and then moves back. A lot of our lives are like that. We have, we have a, uh, an oscillating structure. So structure has integrity. It, it has integrity. Meaning, if you put energy into that structure, it will only move in that way. Does that make sense? It will only move in that way. That's what I mean when I say structure has integrity. So most of us know that we have a current reality and we would like the current reality to move to our desired reality. And we would like this to be an advancing structure, wouldn't we? We'd like to just be able to move towards it. However, in our current reality, we have beliefs or an identity. This also has a tension structure. Okay? 
feel like this isn't straight because I'm using a different computer. You guys can see it, can't you? You can, you can handle it today being a little bit off. So beliefs and identity, hey. So what happens is when you're not moving, when you're not moving towards your desired reality, not, nothing's wrong with this structure. The structure is quite happy, isn't it? It's quite happy. I want you just to imagine that there's just a perfect tension like this, holding that in place, okay? So it's a rubber band, perfect tension then you have a goal, but you're not moving towards it, and your current reality just has this perfect tension in it, okay? Now, what happens if you take some action and you move this current reality and you move it to here? What just happens with this belief? The tension here in this rubber band just had to stretch. Do you see that? As you move from here to here, the tension on your beliefs stretched. Does that make sense? So what's happening here? What's happening? You have the same tension with your desired reality, but the tension with your desired reality has this tension here gone up or gone down? When you, move, when you move closer to that one, it's gone down, hasn't it? So this is no longer tight. This is now a loose, it's a loose tension, you see? But this has increased and it has got stronger. Do you see that? It's got stronger. So this is this is a oscillating structure because here's what's going to happen. Your belief, so let's say your desired reality is to become abundant, financially abundant. Okay, so we're just saying money. Current reality is you have little dollar sign and you want it to go this way. But your belief says, Someone with lots of money, your beliefs are identity. You say, I'm not that. Your belief says, I'm not that. So your beliefs are here. As you move towards it, this gets stronger. So this tension does what? Well, it pulls you back. So your current reality swings from here and it swings back to here. And can you see that once it swings back to here, the tension increases again. So it moves from this and it comes back to here, to this current reality back here. And this tension gets strong again and this gets strong and you move back. And so you just go like this. You move a little bit forward and then a little bit back. Who's noticed this in their life? Who's noticed this? This? Can you see how it happens, hey? Can you see how it happens? So, so structure has integrity. And this, this structure uh, or is one that, are, that we know and we, we all see a lot. We all see a lot. And so you move towards it and then you feel this weird thing pulling you. And what does this pull look like? So we're going to call this, and this comes from William Whitecloud, psychological tension psychological tension can someone write in psychological tension into the chat box this is psychological tension psychological tension is a tension inside of you to resolve how you think you are broken integrity being whole it's a, there's a way that it doesn't change unless you break it, Kim. Okay. It won't change unless you break it. It's in, it has a, has a way.
So as you as you start, so so as you're in this place here, everything is in balance. The identity and the current reality are all happy with each other. As you move this forward, as you move towards what you want, your body starts saying things like, oh, I doubt you can do this. I don't think you're smart enough. You've never done this before. This is scary, overwhelm. Why do you even want it? Does that make sense? And it pushes all that up. And then you, you get caught in the tension of that and you go, you go off to fix it. You see? And you go off to fix it. And so we then go down to fix it. So let's call this psychological tension, which is a tension to, to resolve a way you feel incomplete. And then let's call this other tension here, let's call it a creative tension. Creative tension. Can you guys write that in? So you have a creative tension. You have a psychological tension, which is uh, trying to fix yourself. The psychological tension believes you need to be a certain way. It believes you need to add things to you. It believes you're not it. That's what the psychological tension, the limited perspective of you believes that. And it's saying, no, you're not that. Come fix me. Come do this. Come be this way. Come take this course. Come do this. Now, what happens is both, either tension can break. So a lot of people move this way a bit, and this tension becomes so big, they pull back to here, and it snaps this off, and they give up on their dreams. That's, that's, I've seen that a lot. The psychological tension is too big. Others stay focused, and they snap this off, and they just create just the way they are. And I'm going to help you make that shift. I'm going to help you make that shift. But I want to let you know just how uh, just how profound this work is by uh, honoring uh, someone who I think is very smart, who's going to give us a very great uh, explanation of just how much uh, psychological tension can, can really upset your system. So if, if you want to create, you can go and create, but you must be it first. The way to have no psychological tension is to be it first, is to already be it. If you are already it, what, what I'm, when I say that, uh, I should have left the desk up. When I say that you're already it, that is when you have a current reality and a desired reality. And then instead of having a psychological tension down here with an identity, you have an identity that is happy in the current reality and happy here, not trying to escape anything. That's, that, that's the shift that you make. See, the reason why the reason why this is created, so how this is all created is because this identity does not believe it's this identity. This is what creates it because it's not it, you see? So the identity says, well, I'm not that, I'm not that. So there's tension as you move. As soon as you realize you are it already and you're any other desired reality, and none of them matter, you're happy in every single one. Once you get here, you have no resistance. The psychological tension is gone. That's when it's gone. That's why the change happens now and you must be it to see it. So, so structure has integrity, even with the most, some of the smartest people, smartest people in the world and someone I respect deeply. So who knows who uh, Jordan Peterson is? Who knows Jordan? Do you guys know Jordan, Jordan Peterson? I, I've, I have a lot of respect for, for Jordan and his impact that he's uh, made in the world and his, his first two books were brilliant. Anyway, he's, he's brilliant. He's uh, 
got tens of millions of views uh, on YouTube. He wrote The 12 Rules of Life and a book called Maps of Meaning. And he just had a new book come out called Beyond Order. And I'm not recommending him, but, he's, but he, I respect him. I respect him. I read uh, his Maps of Meaning, very, very dense book and uh, very hard read. Uh, whereas I was studying Freud and Jung and Nietzsche, he, uh, you know, he became obvious to study as well. So I did. And then uh, I read his 12 Rules of Life book and I was, um, I was so attracted to his articulate thought process of breaking down uh, Chris, Christian stories in a beautiful way and, and just very well researched guy. Jordan is a psychologist uh, for Harvard, and he, I think he's the head head of psychology at Toronto University. Um, does that make sense? Like he's uh, that that's a pretty significant person. Hey, if you're a, if you're a professor of psychology at Harvard, would you say that that's um, that's a pretty that's a pretty significant that's a that's a, that's someone who knows things, isn't it? So I read his book and I really loved it. Actually, I really loved it, and I was I was so excited to get his new book. And I got his new book two two weeks ago, and I've I've uh, I've unfortunately never been more disappointed in my life uh, with with a with a leader that I was looking up to. And I was thinking, wow, this is a really smart guy. And but I am also very respectful and proud of him for doing this. He he writes in the beginning of his book that uh, he's been battling depression and on depression pills for years, uh, or anti-depression pills for years. And that because he became so famous, he had huge anxiety and uh, then had to start taking something for his anxiety on top of his anti-depression pills. And then he got addicted to those and he kept on putting the, the dosage up and he got so addicted that he ended up in hospital and his daughter's daughter had to take him to Russia and get him weaned off this crazy medication. And I, I simply couldn't believe it that somebody who was, uh, you know, so well read and, and very articulate and the head of psychology at amazing universities and a clinical psychologist was still needing to, to have, uh, to have antidepressants. Couldn't, couldn't believe it. And then I realized the, there was a few gifts in it, but but here's what I want you to get. Structure has integrity. Structure has integrity. That's the gift. Here's the gift. Number one, you can write a 10 million copy bestseller on how to live life while yourself still being on depression pills. So first off, I'm like, wow, he didn't have to fix himself. He wrote this thing, even if maybe he wasn't Hadn't figured out even how to be happy, I guess. But but here's what I really learned, and I want you to know I, I really respect this. Is if you put the power in medication, and he put the power there, what he said was when his fame took off, when his fame took off, the anxiety was so big, he needed something to deal with that. Why? because he had always put the power in something else needing to help him with this. So as the anxiety of internet trolls and people attacking him got bigger, guess what? The little thing that might have just been little when it was just when it was just there, as soon as there was more energy in it, the structure had integrity and it pulled him into a place where he had to take a year off presenting and be a year off teaching to go get off this, this uh, anxiety medication. It pulled him. Does this make sense, everyone? It pulled him because the structure had integrity and the structure was, I can't be happy without a pill. Let that sink in for a second. And also remember, I, I really, really, really respect him. And he put himself out there and boy, you, to sell 10 million copies of something is not trivial. So he is a successful person. And, uh, and it was just very shocking to, to me to, to receive this. But, but here's the lesson. Structure has integrity.
structure has integrity. And so as you put more energy into a structure, it will flow along the path of least resistance. You see that? It will flow along the path of least resistance. So here's what I want you to all to hear. I want you to hear this is where you put your focus, where you put the power. If it's a small problem now, it can get exponentially a big problem. It, it, it's very important for you right now to learn how to structure your focus right. Can I get some yeses? Who, who agrees with that? That's the lesson here. The lesson isn't that he didn't, he wasn't able, he was still able to create success. I want you to hear this. He is still, he's a very successful person, very successful. He was still able to create success just the way he is. But it also created a huge amount of pain that if he'd learned how to structure his focus the right way, it would have been better. Isn't this true? Isn't this true? He still succeeded. He's got a happy family. His daughter looks very successful. I think he's a grandparent now. Uh, worldwide accolades, written two books, impacted lives. He's a professor at a probably the most well-known university in the whole world. You know, that as a human being, I mean, remarkable. And so he didn't need to fix himself, but it caused him such chaos because if he'd just learned to put the power somewhere else in himself and being in a structure that, that he had it already, it would have flowed. It would have. So, so I'm so thankful to the lesson. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. And, and I, you know, I just, I know that he, you know, I've got deep respect for him. I know he's, he's handling his lesson. And you know what I love the most about him? He didn't, he didn't lie. He just told everyone how it is. And that must have been a tremendously difficult decision, knowing that uh, people would have read would read and read it like I have. And he decided to go with the truth. So I'm pretty, pretty proud of him for that. So so structure has integrity, hey? Structure has integrity. And in behavior, your behavior is the highest form of information. You want to know where the tension and what structure you're in in your life? behavior, not the words you say, what you do or don't do. Yeah, that's right. He did choose and he's, and he's fixing it up. I, he weaned himself off it and he's getting himself right. You know, no, he's, he's, he's doing it, which is the only thing you can do. So, uh, so the point is, is to understand, here's the point is he's still successful, but what happened was he forced it and forced it and forced it. And then the structure broke because he was in a compensating pattern, you see? So he was able to force a success, but then it broke and it pulled him right back and he's starting again. Does that make sense? It's an oscillating structure. G keep on trying to run away from whatever's making him anxious and have a pill to stop it. Tension's building up, building up, building up, building up, building up, building up, snap. Back to where he started. You don't have to do that. You, you simply don't have to do that. Behavior, is the highest form of communication behavior. So how how do you get yourself structured in the right way? How do you so how do you get this is a, I mean that's a million dollar question, isn't it? How do you get yourself uh, structured in the right way? We must realize that it is our decision where we put the power, and the more that we put the power into the beliefs that are holding the tension, the more we put our power there, the more that tension with our beliefs will be there. See, the less we, the less we put our focus on it and the more we stay focused on uh, an identity that we are it, the more that we're in our end result and this, this tension here is no longer there. So, so how do we do it? We must ask ourselves, where is the power? Where is the power? Am I focused on the end result or am I focused on how I can't have it the way I am? Am I focused on having it already or am I focused on trying to, to get somewhere? Okay. 
So there's there's two ways. Uh, should I draw this up? Yeah, I will. I will draw it. I will draw it. And, and please know uh, that uh, that this is very deep stuff, and it might take you a few lessons to get. Okay, the, the first way is if you have a, uh, a negative vision. This is how you know you are not it. A negative vision equals not it. So a negative vision, okay, is when you have a current reality and then you have your desired reality like normal, However, your desired reality is better or trying to fix the current reality. When you have a negative vision, it's because your vision is focused on the current reality and improving it and improving it. Whenever you have a desired reality and you believe life will be better when life will be better when I have this body, I have this relationship, I have this, this marriage, I have this body, I have whatever it is. When you do that, that is a negative vision. Okay. And the reason why it's a negative vision is because you don't have it now. You see, it's a complete setup. It's a complete setup. When you say it will be better then, what you're really saying is now is worse. So what you're really saying is that this identity does not equal this identity. You see, it's a lie. When you give the power to a future being better than the now, you are not it. Does that make sense? You are not it. When you say when that when that happens, then I can be happy. That's a lie. When you can be happy, you be happy. So the first way that you are in an oscillating structure in a structure that will not resolve in success is when you think that the future will we'll somehow fix the now. If I just had more money, if I, no, no. The way to ensure that you're not in a negative vision is that your now must be as good or better than the future. And this is what messes up people the most when it comes to money and health, actually. They actually have negative visions. They think when they have the money, it will solve things. It, do, it literally doesn't. They think when they have that, the healthier body that it will be, their life will be miraculously better. And it just isn't. It just isn't. It just isn't. But they lie to themselves and they put the power in, in, in an ideal. They put the power in the ideal. So the first way, okay, the, 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 uh, the first way that we are uh, in the incorrect structure is through a negative vision, okay? And a negative vision is when we're using the vision to, to fix the now, putting the power. See, guys, when you think about this, where's the power? The power is in whatever is in this reality, whether it's the money, it's the love, or the health. See, the power is there. This isn't that much different than saying a pill. You see that? We all, we all were shocked at um, my story um, that I shared. And, and th that story was saying, well, if I could just have a pill, I'm better. Can you acknowledge if I just had a relationship, if I just had more money, if I just had, it's the same thing, isn't it? it it's, 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 that is the structure. And just like he got addicted, you get, oh, no, I'll just get more. No, no. You have it now, then you can keep it. 
You have it now, then you keep it. Sujata says, how can being unhealthy, poor and small be good or better than being healthy, powerful and abundant? It's not. Because in both instances, you're a creative being that's using a body to have an experience. That whole question is oriented in the limited perspective. How could it be worse? How could it be better? When you go to the all of what is, everything's equal. Everything's equal, hey? How could, our, you know, it's only our self-conscious definition of what is good and bad that creates it. True? They're all just different flavors. They're all just different flavors. How could, how could it either be better, you know? Like, it, it's, such a, it's such a strange thing. So we go get all this money, but we don't have time with our kids. Or how's that better? We go have time with our kids, we don't have money. None, none of it is better or worse. It's just is. It, and it, it's just is. It's you arriving and acknowledging that you already are powerful. See, we think, well, Chris, how could, how could uh, having less money be better than having more money? Because right now is the now. So let me really answer it, hey? Let me ask you this. What could be better than the now? No matter what you've got. What could possibly be better than being a creative energy inhabiting a human body, having a weird experience? What could possibly be better than that? More, more money? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, of course not. Damn it, there's another thing I should have put in my book. <laughs> I keep saying these things. I'm like, oh, I wish I'd put that in my book. <laughs> but isn't it true? Isn't it true? So, so thank you. You know, what could pass? Many of you are fighting me with this. Someone's typed in, well, what if you're blind? Come on, think about this. When did we get so focused on limitation. I know blind people that are way happier than people that got 20-20 vision. I know people who are blind who are way, made way more success, had a way better life. It's just not relevant. Does that make sense? I see the question. It's just not relevant. It just is. It just is. And, and I love those that are typing in because I love the battle. I love the battle as you're going, you know what, though, I'm not sure about this, but it's true. It's true. There's nothing better than the now, no matter what it is. And once you realize that you're all these things and you're not, not so focused on the now sucks and the future is going to be better, then you can have it all. But if you keep saying in the now sucks, the future will be better, you never get it. You're never even allowed to keep it. Okay, so negative vision. Uh, the, the other is that we, uh, we have an egoic agenda. And this is where we have a current reality. And what we go for is, in, is to actually fix ourselves. Fix or complete ourselves. Complete, complete ourselves. So we actually think that we're not enough, not good enough. And what we're actually doing is trying to resolve that. That's what we're actually doing. We have any, or we think that we're not worthy. And we're going to resolve um, to be worthy. And that's an egoic agenda. And, and uh, the reason why, oh, and so, so the reason why this never works is that if you're inherently not good enough, if that's your identity, inherently not good enough, that identity does not equal whatever it is that you're trying to create that would be good enough. Do you, do you hear that? So let's say you say, hey, I'm not good enough, uh, but if I had a uh, million dollars, then I would be good enough. Well, by the nature of what you're saying is you're not good enough, and if you have that, you'll be good enough. So you can never have that because if you were to have that, you would have to be good enough. So the egoic agenda never resolves itself uh, either. 
The egoic agenda never resolves itself either. So you have negative vision or an egoic agenda. But what's the basis of all of it? Let's bring it home. What's the basis of all of it? Is that every single uh, structure that doesn't work is when you are not it. And you have to rely on a pill or money or a relationship or something or, or fixing yourself. Something has to happen for you to be whole. You see that? The key is you must be it now. That's the key. True? That is the key that unlocks the moment. When you step into the moment and you are it, and you're not trying to say this future will be so much better than the now, you say, no, nothing will be better than the now because here I am, I've got a pulse, I've got a heartbeat, I can, I can do so, I, all the best things are free anyway, I, I, I'm alive right now, I've got, I've got breath right now. Nothing can be better than that. And when you truly get that, when you truly get that, then you've unlocked the moment and you simply go, I'll have that, please. I'll create that, thank you. And, and that's when you just flow to it. You just flow to it. That's the key. That's the key. You must be it now. You must be it now. Until you master the now, until the now is, is the best thing and nothing's better and you're so happy and nothing could make you more good or more worth. When you've mastered the moment, that, that is when you're 100% what I'd like you to call a superconductor. There is no resistance. You're like a beach ball. I can flick and you will move anywhere, no problem. Then when you've got no resistance because you're the all, we do some lenses with you and we create like magic. When you're a superconductor with no resistance, no fixing, no egoic agenda, when you're just happy as can be and you go, I'm so satisfied with everything I have now. I'm so happy with everything I have now. Nothing could be better. And I would love, I would just love, I would love to create my dream home, or I would love, I would so love to be an author. I would love to, I would love to create an amazing home. I would love to have an amazing relationship. And that would be a great thing to create. And that would just be, I would love to experience, but it won't make me any better or any worse or any more worthy, or it won't do anything that I couldn't already have now. It's just a flavor I would like to experience. For example, you're sitting there with a with you're choosing an ice cream cone and you say, Well, well, I'm already happy with the ice cream I want, but I want to try that flavor. Why? Because I just like to. Because I just like to. You sit down at a menu, uh, you know, you sit down at a restaurant and you say, I'm gonna have the uh, the, the prawns, uh, you know, they're gonna have shrimp, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have the steak. Why, why, why are you having the steak? Because I just would like to. You see, do you see that? It's just because you would like it. It's not because it's there to resolve anything or fix something or make things better because nothing's better. So structure has integrity. And structure is created by where you put the power. If you put it in a negative vision or an egoic agenda, or meaning if you put it outside of you, if something, money, relationship, love, a pill, uh, a certain weight, if you put it outside of you, 
that structure, no matter how strong willed you are, even one of the strongest people that I've seen, even if you're that strong, eventually the integrity will have its way. It will have its way. And you can force your way through and you can become a Harvard professor and, and have a great marriage and you can have and you can make lots of money and write amazing books and you can do all these things, but the structure will have its way. The structure of the power is outside of me. It will have its way. So here's my question for your recode, for the recode today. What prevents you being 100% happy with the now. And be, just be honest. So let's choose. Let's choose a life we love now. That's correct, Nikki. Structure has integrity. So we'll do our recode focused on a life we love. A life we love. 100% we love. Okay. 100% we love. Now, what people are going to say is when we do this, they're going to say, but Chris, you don't know I've got a diagnosis or I've got this physical pain or I've got this or I've got that. I'm not denying you would prefer to be tasting a different flavor of ice cream. I'm not denying that right now this, my back hurts, isn't the one that you want to keep on tasting. I'm not denying that. But what I am saying is you get to be absolutely, completely bigger than that now and happy as possible now and then go, yep, and now that I'm happier, I'm happier now than I would be even if I didn't have the pain. I'm, I'm above it. I'm bigger than it. I get it. You might be licking an ice cream of not enough financial money. And you go, I don't really, it's not really what I want. But you got to know you're bigger than it. You're going to create happiness and abundance now, realizing you can have more joy and abundance with, with you know, uh, with, with, with nothing. And you can have a terrible time with lots of money. Many of us have experienced this. We buy a, an expensive holiday for ourselves or our family, and it's not as fun as the free, the free, the free holiday we could go to any day down at the local park. We know that. We know it's creative. We know that, but we lie to ourselves. And so you get, you get to, you get to acknowledge you do want to try something different, but it doesn't get to be more powerful than you. True. It doesn't get to take, it doesn't get to be the reason why you can't be happy. Don't you dare let it own you. See, when it's the thing that stops you living how you want to be, it's in control of you. You're weak. This other thing has you, says you, look, you can't be happy because of this. Isn't it? Is, isn't that, is that, is that right? Is that right, everyone? Is that right? Like when, when, it, when it's the reason for your, uh, can give you happiness and take it away, you're, you're powerless compared to it. It's true, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's true. And, 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 and it's just true. It's what it is. But we're not denying that, that we can be completely happy now and then we choose what we want to then experience. But that thing won't give us more than we could already have. That's the key. That's the key. You unlock it. It won't give you more. It's just something you'll get to have. It's inevitable. When I say structure has integrity, what I mean is the end result of the structure is inevitable. It's inevitable. And the inevitable structure of being happy now is you will be happy and you'll have no resistance to your creations. And that means you'll have them. The inevitable structure of denying the now and being sad is you'll be sad and you'll never get them because you're not, you're not already it. 